I don't have time for any setup or anything like that. We got to go to the word of God. Uh, for those that are here for the first time, we're in a sermon series entitled Model Home. We've been talking about the importance of family and the importance of making sure your family life or your model home is conducive so that God can be glorified in the family dynamic that you have. We've been trying to paint a picture that many of us, we like model homes. We like to go in model homes. We like to see how people have set up the different furniture and people have put certain ideas and concepts in the model homes so that we will have an appetite to purchase that particular home. Likewise, as it relates to our family dynamic, God wants us to make sure we have furniture in place, a thoughtful color concept, appliances that are up to date, uh, he wants to make sure that our house is presented in such a way where people look upon our life and they can see Jesus and they can say, mm, I want my life to be just like that. Yes. And having said that, we're going to get ready to jump into the word of God uh, for this part six of the Model Home Sermon Series and go to the book of Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 3. Proverbs 24 in verse 3, that's where the text will be coming from. This is our foundational text, and it reads as this. Proverbs 24, 36. Through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. For by wise counsel, you will wage your own war, and in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for opening up our eyes and ears to hear what your spirit says. Yes, and just as any meal, it's always customary to see our grace. So, Father God, we pray that you will bless this meal, yes. this word. Lord, let it add strength and nourishment to our spirit, soul, and body. Let it bring edification. And, Father God, we thank you for giving us this daily bread yes. that we can live on. And Father God, we step aside as pastors so you may step forward and get the glory in all that we say and do. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. And Amen. And we're going to entitle this message, Time to Declutter. Time to Declutter. Here in the book of Proverbs, um, it says that we should build our house on wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and good counsel. This is nothing more than what I call a recipe to have the model home or the family that God wants you to have as a believer. In order for it to be all that it needs to be, you have to have wisdom. Yes. What does wisdom do? It gives you the ability to make the proper decision at the right time. Also in that, you're going to have to have understanding. What is understanding? The ability to come under and stand despite whatever comes your way and see what God is saying about the situation. Then it goes on to say that we need to have knowledge. Many of us know that we made the statement, knowledge is power. And truth be told, knowledge is power because it gives you the ability to discern what's really going on. And last but not least, you have to have wise counsel in your life or I'll say it like this, wise counselors in your life. Mm -hmm. The scripture clearly tells us that in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. safety. So in other words, if you want your family to be safe, if you want your relationship to be in a safe place, you got to have a multitude or amalgam of counselors mm -hmm. in your life so that your model home or family can be designed like God wants it designed. Amen. I'm going to do a high level overview of what we've covered thus far. Uh, Modern Home Part One, we talked about laying the foundations. Uh, components of a good family foundation are wisdom, understanding, and knowledge of wise counsel. We want you to be sure to continue to learn your family as well as work to understand them. Get away from those with the problems, hang with those with the solutions. Model Home Part Two was design plan. The original plan for all family is oneness. We have to be aware of two major attackers of oneness, which was selfishness and mm -hmm. pride. Then we talked about selfishness must be brought down and pride. It will destroy everything you try to establish. 
part three, relationship goals. Every family needs a vision, yeah. but not just any vision. You have to ask God. Uh, you have to first have a desire to have a godly family. No one can want it for you. You got to want it for yourself. Every family should write down what you hear God say about your family. Speak it regularly. Don't get frustrated when you, things aren't moving the way you think they should. And use patience and love when dealing with your family. Part four, open house. Our goal as a family should be an open house, but we must know it will cost us something. Uh, we gave nine things that your family must have in place for your open house. Go back, watch it live so you can get it. Uh, model home part five, we're moving. Yep. That was the game plan. That was the Murrays. They talked about before you can move, you have to have a game plan. They gave us game plan, which was grace, agreement, mission, and execution. Amen. So that leads us uh, to time to declutter. Yes. So let's begin to define what declutter uh, defined is. It simply means to get rid of mess, disorder, or complications. Yes. It means to remove clutter and things you do not need from a place in order to make it more pleasant and useful. Declutter, uh, getting rid of certain things. Yes. My wife and I, we're in a phase of, I call it downsize. Mm -hmm. uh, my children, they're going to be in their new homes before the end of the year is out. And because of that, my wife and I, we're going to downsize. We don't have need for the space that we, we have. So we're going to uh, clean out our home so that we can put it up for sale and go into the next phase of our life. But before we put the house up for sale, one of the things that we are having to do is get rid of all the clutter that's in our house. As we began to prepare our home, we did not realize how much clutter was there. We got things that we don't need, things in our home that is broken, things in our home that's in the wrong place, things in our home that we don't use anymore. We, we really got a whole lot of things that we have to cipher through so that we can get our house back up to snuff yeah. so that someone may want to buy it. Yeah. And as we were preparing this particular message, we began to think about how cluttered our lives are sometimes. Yes. Truth be told, we got a whole lot of things in places where it don't need to be. I'm yeah. preaching better than y'all saying something. Yeah. We got some mess over here. We got some things that are broken that we have failed to fix. And get this, we know that they have been broken for some years, y'all. <laughs> yes, we've been in broken relationships, broken situations. Our communication with our husband is broken. Yep. Our, our relationship that we have with our children is broken. It's mess over here. It's mess over there. And we have failed to clean it up. And the reason why is because... Our life is filled with clutter. Yes, yes. But God is saying, if you want your life to be where it needs to be, if you want to have the model home that Christ says that we can have, yeah. you got to be willing to get rid of the clutter out of your life. Amen. And decluttering means you have to get rid of the things of the past. Mm, that's One of good. the things that I found um, by going through stuff throughout the house is there are a lot of old stuff. Uh, one of the things that I know and a rule that I know to apply is if you haven't used it in two years, get rid of it. But there are so many things and being in our home almost 15 years, there's a lot of stuff that's in rooms. There's a lot of stuff that's in closets. There's a lot of stuff in the garage. It's just stuff, stuff everywhere. And I started the declutter process and I had a yard sale one week because it was just so much stuff. And then I was like, okay, the, I did the yard sale. It is still a lot of stuff. Mm. And I think I did that yard sale over a month and a half ago, and I still got a lot of stuff to get rid of. And I realized that it's a whole lot of stuff. And like our lives, sometimes we have things from the past, stuff that we haven't talked about, stuff that we haven't let go of, stuff that we've just held on to that is not even useful to us. There are a lot of relationships that are in your life that you hold it on to that they're no longer useful. Ooh. There are people that are connected to you that you don't even 
even have a use for them in your life. Not that you should drop people, but there are some people that you do need to drop. There are some people that are not benefiting you. If anything, they're bringing you down versus building you. Mm. So now you have a whole lot of clutter. You have your old friend from 1997 that you all y'all did was turn up together. And the only thing they want to do is turn up. So now that clutter is in your life. You have some things that are in your life, unforgiveness, some things that you haven't talked to your spouse about. Maybe you all had a disagreement two years ago, but that thing is still in your heart. Heart. There is some clutter there that needs to be taken out and removed. So the things of the past have to come out of our life so that we can get the clutter-free life or model home that we desire. Amen. Philippians 3 and 13 says this, Brethren, sisterin, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. This is uh, a scripture that Paul, uh, the tent maker from Tarsus, uh, began to share with us that um, I have not apprehended, but this one thing, forgetting the things that are behind. And truth be told, I believe Paul is letting us know that Sometimes we have to reassess our life to see where we are in the present so that we'll know what we really need to get rid of in our past. Truth be told, when you start looking over your life, the relationships, the people, the places and the things that we go, many of us, we know that we can let some things go. And my thought is, if it's not an asset to you in your life right now, it's nothing more than a hindrance to your future. Yes, it is. One more time, if it's, an, if it's not an asset to you in your life, you better believe it's nothing more than a hindrance to your future. Yeah. But what often happens is we have people and we have places and we have things that are pulling from our life yeah. that's stopping us from living our best life now. Yeah. But Paul is saying, hold on, this is what you need to do. You need to forget those things that are behind. Yeah. You need to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So in other words, if they're not going with Jesus, they don't need to go with you. Yes. It's time to rearrange some things. Yes. It's time to throw away some furniture. I'm talking about that old couch that only got three legs and the last leg hanging on like this. (laughs) And you scared to sit on it. And when the people come, you want to prop it back up like it's all right. (laughs) God has said it's time for you to get rid of those past things. Those things that are not a benefit to your future. And so often we get comfortable with allowing people to sabotage our future Mm. because we don't want to get rid of our past. I'm preaching better than y'all saying something, but y'all got to get this. Mm. Your future is bright, and God is saying that it's time for you to do simple arithmetic. I said simple arithmetic, y'all, y'all, yeah, 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 arithmetic, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about where you begin to understand that if you want someone to add value to your life, they have to be a positive. And if they are negative in your life, Mm -hmm. you need to counsel them. But so many of us, we want to breeze past the course of arithmetic. And and, and God is saying, no, I need you to begin to count the cost. I need you to begin to see that that person is worthless to you in your life. Mm -hmm. And in order for me to give you what you need in your life, you got to be willing to let go of your past. Yes, let it go. And reach toward what I have for you to receive yes. in your life. Amen. Give God some praise for that. That's good. So then this question is, when will the past have enough of your family's attention? When will it have enough? When will you stop lingering on the past? When will you let go of what used to be and go forward to what God wants you to have in the future? Have you ever been around somebody who talks about nothing but the past? Don't that just irritate you? There are some people that I know that I'll see and I'll talk to, and the only memory we have is what we used to do back in the day. 
to me, that means that relationship is stale. That relationship Ooh. is f- not fresh. I got some new things going on in my God life. Is God doing is doing a new. new thing. Yeah. Every single day, God is refreshing me. God is renewing me. God is growing me up. God is maturing my life. I don't want to babysit the past. I want to go forward. I don't want to talk about what we used to do back in the day. I don't want to talk about what, what used to go down. And you remember such and such. And you remember this and that. No, I don't. I want to talk about what God is going to do in our yes. life in the future. That's good. So I'm not going to sit and babysit what we used to do. I don't want to care. I don't care about none of that. All I want to talk about is what God is going to do. Let me tell you about what God is doing in my family. Let me tell you how God is maturing the church. Come Let on, me talk on. about the Ford Christian Center, how we moving forward. Yes. I don't want to talk about what we used to do back in the booth in the back in the corner of the dog. That does not have my attention. Some of you all need to reevaluate some things. Think about those people or those things in your life that have had you bogged down and have your attention. What has your attention? Has something that has gone on or took place years ago still troubling your mind? Are the things that you used to do still haunting you? Are those things that are in the past, I'm talking about deep back in the past, and y'all still talking about them? Every time you argue, you get still getting historical, not hysterical, historical. Y'all getting all kind of history lessons. You sitting, you talking about your issues, but everything has to do with the past. When has the past had enough of your attention so that you can move forward and be everything? I'm talking about everything that God wants your family to be. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise there. Yeah, yeah. And when you think about it. One of the key indicators is this phrase when you run across certain people. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey man, what's going on? Ain't nothing. <laughs> ain't nothing. You ain't seen them in five years. Hey, what's going on? Hey, nothing. nothing. Same old, same old. You mean ain't nothing going on in your life? Mm. It's nothing but the same old thing? Mm. No, no, no. It's not the same old thing. It's not nothing going on in my life. God is doing something in my life. I'm moving. I'm growing. I'm thriving. My kids are getting bigger. My kids are developing. My life is moving forward. God is doing this, that, and the other. I'm I'm preaching. I'm ministering the word. I'm serving my community. I'm loving on people. I have relationships that are growing and thriving. So so when when the person is always saying that they don't have nothing going on in their life, you need to run. (laughs) Run, Forrest, run. Because God is always maturing us. God is always developing our life. God is always in the middle of doing something for us. And truth be told, when you look at your life, God is doing something for you right now. Isaiah 43 and 19 says this. Do not remember the former thing. Neither consider the things of old. Mm. Behold, I will, I will, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. So shall you not know it. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the middle of the desert. Yes. This is what God is saying. The person that's saying that is nothing more than the same old, same old that's happening. They're not connected with God because God is saying, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Do you not know it? And even in the middle of your wilderness, I'm going to put a road there. Even in the middle of your desert or dry season or the pandemic, I'm going to allow a river to flow. And I'm going to bless your life even while other people falling by the wayside. I'm preaching better than y'all saying something. Because some of y'all are doing nothing more than than, than feasting on the goodness of God. And God is just trying to remind you that even though other people might have nothing working in their life, I'm always working something in your life. Yes, thank God for working in my life. Come on. If you thank God for working in your life, give him praise. He's working in our life. He's making a road in the wilderness. Amen. But we have to stand and begin to ask ourselves, who will make the decision to move forward to declutter your family? Who's going to make the choice? Who's making that decision? Is it going to be the spouse, the husband? Is it going to be the wife? If you're single, is it going to be you? 
If it's your children, if you're a teenager, are you going to decide to declutter your family? Who's going to make the decision? Somebody has to make the choice. Somebody has to make the game plan. If you want your family to become better, then somebody has to stand up and make the choice. Man of God, will it be you? Woman of God, will it be you? Teens, will it be you? Who's going to make that choice? We can't sit back and think that it's just going to happen. You got to do it. One of the things that I've been doing, I've been going bit by bit decluttering things because I made the decision that I'm going to be the one to declutter <laughs> some things naturally at our home. So somebody has to make the decision. I think it's strange sometimes to see men of God that don't have a heart to see their family become better. Because in my mind, I feel like as the man of God, you should want your family to be the best that it can be. Amen. But many times, that's not the story. Many times, it's the women of God who are driving the household. It's the women of God who are pushing their families forward. But I think it should be the other way around. Man of God, stand up. Speak the word of God. There is somebody, your children, your wife, your family member is waiting for the voice of the man of God to say what thus said the Lord. But if you don't open up your mouth and say anything, then things are going to remain the same. I want to speak to the men of God to encourage you to get your voice back. Get your mouth open and begin to declare the word of yes, God over yes. your family. You be the first partaker of praise. You be the first partaker of worship. You be the one that says, we going to church today. You be the first one to say, children, we going to pray. You be the first one to say, in this house, we going to serve the Lord. That should be the pattern that we should be one step. Men of God, you should be one step leading your family in the things of God. And if your spouse is not coming along with you, it's all right. You press forward in the things of God. Gather those children. Speak the word over their life. Gather your family. If you're single, you stand flat-footed and declare the word over yourself as the man of God over your life. Don't sit back and let the woman do all the praying. You pray. Don't let the woman be the key praiser in the household. The devil is a liar. Come on, man of God. Yeah. Get what God says is yours yeah. and speak the word over your family. Amen. That's good. Come on, let's give God some praise there. Yeah. yeah. And when you think about it, the definition was uh, to get rid of declutter. You have to put things back in order. You have to put things in its proper perspective. And just as you share, truth be told, even in Christian, a lot of times we see where women have been more sensitive toward the things of God. Yeah. Women are leading their household in the spiritual realm as it relates to their particular family. Most uh, men have taken a back seat. And they typically do what the woman is telling them to do. If the woman say, hey, we're going to come and we're going to serve the Lord or we're going to uh, make sure that our foundation is going to be rooted in the things of God. Most women are driving that. And you'll know it because when uh, the woman stops driving it, the family will begin to fall by the wayside. Yeah. But we want to begin to paint the picture that in order to declutter your life, you have to put things back in its proper order. Yeah. God created Adam first and then out of Adam he made Eve yeah. and then from Eve and Adam's uh, consummation then the children began to flow and that is the proper order so many of us we need to declutter our lives yeah. spiritually yeah. in other words we're saying men take your rightful place yeah. take your place as the king and the priest of your home yeah. notice the there's a difference between king and queen yeah. The queen is a woman. It is someone that, that you're in covenant or relationship with. Yeah. But God is saying, don't let the queens rule your kingdom. Yes. That don't even sound right. Because your queen, if the queens rule the kingdom, it's not a kingdom anymore. It's a queendom. queendom. <laughs> so God is saying spiritually, yes. get your house back in order. Yes. Get rid of the declutter and put things in its proper perspective yes. or proper place. Yes. And, and when we do this, we'll begin to 
put our hands to the plow and allow yeah. God to be glorified in our life. Yeah. So God is just saying, man of God, take your rightful place. Woman of God, fall back under the man. Mm -hmm. And then under the woman of God, then that's when the children yes. should begin to be, be, so to speak. So let's begin to look at Luke 9 and 62. It says this. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow mm -hmm. and looking back is fit for the what? The fit for the what? The kingdom. Fit for the what? The kingdom. Did it say queendom? <laughs> Did it say childrendom? It says what? The kingdom. In other words, the king is ruling the kingdom. Yeah. Who's the ruler of the kingdom? God. He's the ruler of the kingdom. Yeah. As it relates to the family dynamic, the man is the ruler of the kingdom. Yeah. So God is just trying to remind us as kings and as priests to put our hands to the plow and don't look back so that God can be pleased with your family dynamic. Amen. Praise God. It's tight, but it's right. Here are uh, major things that clutter a family. The first thing is lies. Lies can clutter your family. When there are a lot of lies involved in your household, there's a lot of clutter. When somebody is deceptive or someone is manipulative, when people don't uh, tell the truth and aren't transparent, then that clutter begins to cloud the family life. Unforgiveness is another thing that begins to clutter our families when there are some things that we have not let go when there are some issues in our hearts that we're holding on to, then our family can't move forward because we're locked into that place of where the offense took place. Secrets. When someone is being uh, secretive, when there are things hidden, when uh, the truth is not being revealed in its full essence, when someone is holding something and secrets are in the family, then it will cause clutter to be a part of the family. Bitterness and anger. Yes. When somebody is so bitter about angry. things in their heart. Angry man. Angry every man. single day, just mad at the world. Those things will clutter your family. Meanness and gossip. Boy, can't nobody gossip messiness. like family. I mean, messiness and messy. gossip. Uh, there's nothing like a messy gossiping family. Oh, my God. That is the worst. Family gossips. And if you are gossiping about your children, about your family, then that will cause clutter to take place. One of the things that I remember, um, there was a, a young lady, and I just, uh, she was on the phone talking about her daughter. And the daughter's right here. She's like, child, yeah, you know, get my hair done or whatever. And she's like, yeah, this girl, this child, she just want attention. Let me tell you what she did. And she just going off. I'm like, the child is right here. Mm. This is not going to build the family, but it's going to bring clutter in the life of the family. There was all kinds of things being said about the child. I know she had an incident and some things happened at school and stuff like that. But to bring that clutter in the heart of that child, mm -hmm. only thing it did was level her down. So we can't bring that messiness. We can't bring that gossip. We can't speak about our children. We have to build them up, not talk about them. Yes, Lord. And I think what parents don't understand is, yeah, you may be telling your friend or whatever what happened, but to that child, that's clutter in their heart. And it takes a seat in their heart. It takes a seat in their heart. So why are you on the phone like, girl, I got that butt today. Let me tell you what John John did. Girl, I had to go down to that school. Boy, you know this boy act a fool. And you telling all of his business. To him, you gossiping about him. So that clutter now is in John John's heart. And now he can't get past what you're saying about him. It's not words of encouragement. It's not words that are building. But it's words that is tearing him down. But what we should be doing is, hey, can y'all pray for John John? He got some situations, but we believe in God that he's going to come out. Amen. Bless the Lord. That's it. You don't have to tell his business. And people thinking they looking like, oh, that's not gossip. Yes, it is. Yep, that's what it if is. If you're talking to somebody about a problem that they don't have the power to fix, Ooh. then that is considered gossip. 
So if you're talking about something that the person on the other end can't fix, then you're gossiping. So if you're calling somebody, maybe you're a grandparent who's going to help you in the situation, then you're safe. But if you're just calling your friend, or you're calling your cousin, or you're calling a neighbor, then now you've entered into gossip, and that's not healthy for a family. Sin is also a major clutter of family, as well as ungodly counsel. Amen. These are things that clutter up our family. And all of these things, when they rest or they abide in our homes, our homes will be contentious. It's going to be strife in our home. Yeah. And the scripture says where there's in the end, there's strife, there's every evil work. Some of our houses are full with, filled with evil things because we allow these things to clutter up our family dynamic. Mm -hmm. And it remind me, reminded me of one of my uh, favorite movies. Uh, it was called Minister Society. <laughs> and I'm telling too much stuff. But uh, it was a part in there where uh, the grandfather or the father was talking to Cain. And he said, Cain, cast out, cast out the scorner and contention shall cease. And Cain looked up at his granddaddy. What you saying, And he grandpa? said, what you saying, Grandpa? Cain, you got, got to go. go. <laughs> and, and, and that's the way we got to do these things. That's in our home. Yeah. We got to cast out the scorner yeah. so yeah. contention yeah. shall cease. Yes. Whatever's not benefiting you, it's got to go. Yes. Whatever's causing problems and havoc and causing your house to smell bad and look bad and feel bad and be bad. It's got to go. It can be a person. It can be a place. It can be a thing. Just don't let it be you. Amen. Cast out the scorner and contention shall cease. Ephesians 4 and 35, 31 says this. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Yes. Be kind to one another, tender heart, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Here in the scripture, we're letting, it's letting us know to let go of all these things because it causes contentious. Yeah, yeah. It causes strife. Yeah. And sometimes you can feel it in the atmosphere. And you know that it's in the atmosphere because you can cut it with a butter knife. But God is saying if the house don't feel good, yeah. if the house don't smell good, if the house is not cool, do what you need to do to get the atmosphere that you're looking for Amen. in your house. Amen. It starts with you, man of God. Yeah. It starts with you, woman of God. Yeah. It even starts with the children buying in yeah. so that they can have the family dynamic that God wants us to have. Amen. Let me give you these four benefits of decluttering your life. The first thing is you'll be more able to live in the present. When you get rid of the clutter, you can live in the now. You don't have to be in the past. You can live now. The second thing is the problems or things of life have less control over you. When you get rid of the clutter and you get rid of the things or the problems, now they're not controlling your life. Uh -huh. Now every conversation that you and your spouse are having are no longer hysterical or historical. They're now in the now. So they're not controlling the narrative of your life. Thirdly, future decluttering becomes easier. Yes. Once you get all that junk out, it's so much easier to declutter again when you have to. You'll be easy or read, more easily able to recognize when something is out of place when you get rid of the clutter the first time. And lastly, you can now focus more on your family and the activities you enjoy. When you get rid of the clutter, when things are back into focus, now you can spend more time with your family. Now everything is not an argument. Now everything is not a battle. But now you have time. Your mind is open. You're not living in the past. You're not talking about the past. But you're talking about the now. And everything can move smoothly. Amen. So let's get this declutter process started. Here's how you can do it. You have to begin the declutter process. You must first identify what clutter has accumulated in your life. 
truth be told, we know what things have accumulated in our life. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we got to get rid of people on Facebook. Sometimes we got to get rid of things on Instagram and Twitter. Get rid of those things that cause clutter in your life. Yeah. Number two, if you need to let go of a past issue, let it go. It's not hard. Just let it go. It's not hard because all you have to do is move on from what the past has healed you to. Yeah. Number three, if you need professional help, get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sometimes you might need professional help. Somebody that's going to sit down, comb through your life with you. Yeah, yeah. Help you put certain furniture in place. Help you paint a few walls. Yeah, yeah. Help you put some appliances in the place that it needs to be put. You might need some professional help. Yeah, yeah. And get this. Make sure the help is professional. Yes. Say that one more time. Some of y'all go get it. Make sure the help is professional. Yeah. If you're going to pay for something, don't pay no jack leg man to do something a professional is supposed to do. Yeah. Because when you get Jack Leg people to fix your house, your house going to be Jack Leg. Yeah, yeah. Likewise, your family. They call them professionals for a reason. Go to someone that specializes in what your need is. If you have mental issues going on, find a professional counselor that can help you get the peace and the solidarity that you need. If you need a family counselor, go to a professional family counselor. Yeah. Don't go to no principal or no school. Don't go to no counselor in no school. Go to a family counselor. You, yeah. you see it? If you're looking for sincere help, yeah. Yeah. go to a professional yeah. that can help you where your need is. Amen. Number four, schedule a family meeting to discuss how your family plans to move. Anytime our family makes a major decision, we pull our family together. We pull our children in with us. We sit down at the table and we talk about what we're about to do. We talk about how we're going to downsize. We come up with an action plan. We begin to put things in place to make sure our children and their well-being is taken care of. And after that is taken care of, then we fall back to the plan that we have for our life. So in other words, you have to sit down and put some thought to the moves that you're trying to make in your life. Amen. And number five, everyone will have to be on board for a full declutter. Yeah. In order for a full declutter to take place, everybody got to be on board yeah. because here's what happened. Mm -hmm. And trust me, I'm going to speak from experience. <laughs> While one person is putting something in order, uh -huh. another person is pulling that thing back out of order. The story of my life. While one person is washing the clothes and folding the clothes and putting them in baskets, somebody else is coming and now they see clean clothes in a basket that, that, they, that they did not prepare. <laughs> and now they're going to come and take out not just what they need, they throw all of but it. all of it and leave it right there. Mm -hmm. So in other words, Everybody that's in your family dynamic has to be on board yeah. to have a full, complete declutter take place. Amen? Amen? Come on, let's give God some praise. That's all we have for you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's get on our feet and give God some praise. All things do and I will follow you forward. Come on, give me that one more time. You, you make, make all, all things, new. things new. You make all things new. You make all things new. All things new. And I will follow you. I follow you forward. And Father God, we thank you for giving us this time to look at your word, to receive your word, to eat your word. And Father God, it is our prayer, Lord God, that we'll begin to take inventory and declutter our lives right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, Lord, help us get rid of the mess. Help us get rid of the, the furniture and the things and the people and places uh, 
associated with our life that don't mean us well, Lord God. Help us put things back in its proper order or proper perspective in the name of Jesus. Also, Father God, it is our prayer that we'll be able to get rid of those things from our past. Whatever has been holding us back, whatever has been keeping us down, Father God, we let it go right now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I pray, Lord, that harmony and peace will be in our homes, Lord God. And we'll begin to begin to come back to a comfortable place that you would love for our family dynamic to be right now in the name of Jesus. And if lies and if deceit and if ungodliness and if sin and if gossip is a part of our lives right now, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We cast out the scorner, Lord God, so contention shall cease right now. Father God, we decree and declare, Lord God, that our houses shall be beautiful. Our houses shall be all that you have called it to be right now in the name of Jesus. The husband shall get back into his proper place and the wife will know her role and the children will begin to be a blessing to the family right now and we'll begin to gel together in your harmony and in your unity and in your peace right now. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen Amen. and amen. Come on, let's give God some praise in this place. All Thank you.